Lewis, yeah. Yeah. Roy Orbison, yeah. obviously Elvis, uh, Gene Vincent, uh, I like some of the fine instrumentalists, uh, Sam Butera, from Sam Butera and the Wiggles, uh, some of the honkers, Red Kaisan. What about Dick Dale, people like that? Dick Dale. Dick Dale. Dick Dale. Yeah. Dick Dale sang with his sister, I believe. I'm trying to remember. And, and just to say he's, a, he's a good guitarist, Dick Dale. He's on Miss Lou. Then I'm not familiar with him. Right. I'm okay. not, not going to fabricate it. Oh, no, that's good. Okay. That's, that's good. Do you think that, you know, did you create your own sort of sound? Because the yes. stuff like the zoo, the I would, like I would the have, tambourine. I would, have, I would have to say I definitely did create my own, but not just so I could say I created my own. I just wanted to do it myself, went into the studio, used whatever instruments happened to be there. I used to pawn my electric train set or a saxophone, which I didn't play very well. Go in and make recording sessions. Mom would find out, what do you mean you pawned the train set? Give me that ticket. She'd take it out, and two weeks later, he'd be back there again. But meanwhile, I had another two instruments down on the tape. <laughs> how, how old were you when you the first time recorded? First time I recorded? Yeah, and what was the first, if you can... <laughs> I can remember one of the first things I recorded was off the radio on my dad's tape recorder in the early 50s. Yeah. It was See You Later, Alligator by Bill Haley. Group and the comments, of course. Later on, he did a song of mine, by the way. What was song did he do? Uh, something called My Kind of Woman. Not one of his big records, but I met him and he was my all time idol. But legitimately, in the recording studio, I have to say 57, 58 is when I started going into the production studio. Now I have my own one. It took years to get it. They're expensive, as you know, all yeah. this equipment. Oh, man. That on. You wait till you come to the studio if you can do pop in tomorrow. Oh. I'll show you something that uh, I might uh, sit up and beg, that's for sure. It's great right. that technology has advanced so far. Now the up-and-coming musicians can go to the local music store, and if they want to put in the, the wood-burning process or the thinking process, we talk about it, you're capable of going home and starting to make records for yourself. That's true enough. Almost professional, but certainly good enough to be noticed and have somebody come after you and record them. We didn't have that when we started out. Like, you only have what, four tracks when the first, was it four tracks? Oh no, no, when it first came out, mono was in. Mono. Just one hit and that one, was it. And then, uh, uh, Mic up all in one channel and away you're in. And, but what you would do, uh, if you want to look back at some of the earlier years, you had people like Les Paul and Mary Ford that would do overdubbing. They would play one tape recorder while another tape recorder was copying it and they would add something into it somewhere in the middle. How well you did that process made the difference. You could come up with a lot of hiss and glop and clicks and... I think that makes a lot of the records... Talking. I mean, compared to your sort of recording, yeah. I mean, you know, what the record did you record in? When was it the first time you started recording? And what system you compared to sort of what Mick actually sort of recorded on? The first system I worked worked on was, uh, I think it was probably an 8-track, but I mean, uh, most people that we I know were recording on 24-track, 2-inch tape, and that's why I still, I still like 2-inch tape by myself, I like that. What a luxury to yeah. have all those channels. And yeah, that's right. You put a group down, you decide, let's keep it, we'll see if we want it that way, and they add a different group on a totally different way, and when you get close to mixing, you can decide which one or neither. That's good. It's a sound, too. I mean, it's a sound. I love tape. Have you ever tried, just, just for the fact, to actually record in the same system, yeah. simple yeah. system? Yeah, yeah. Or perhaps you can get it on sort of, you know, was it all valve then, man? Was it valve, valve recording material, or was it, or was it, did it start the transistor or something? Oh no, it started off with tubes. Tube is the, uh, like this, yeah. and the same. Tube has that warm, full, and distorted sound. Yeah, yeah. the valve. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. Just, I was talking about your digestive track here again. Now, we talk about tubes like when we're looking at porn films as well. But, oh, or, <laughs> or trains. Or operations. Or operations. So just we're back to the rubber again, are we? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about rubber and latex. Oh, are you into that as well? Well, uh, maybe later tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you too, eh? Hey? 
no one at all. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you think? I mean, when you were touring around with the band and stuff like that, oh I mean, a lot goodness. of people, I mean, can, can you give us any sort of... I certainly can. Come on, then. You want to hear some of the naughty things? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Some, some, of it, some, of, oh, I got it. some of this we have in the CD. I can remember some cruel things we did. I don't yeah, think... Cool. No, no, no. I had a 57 Lincoln convertible. It was about as big as that Cadillac big ass convertible, the yeah, 59. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The 57 Lincoln, for those of you that have a 57 Lincoln, yeah. The battery is located under the passenger's compartment where the passenger sits. We were with a group called the Bell Notes. I've had it, Spanish towns. That, those were our records. We were touring. We pulled into a gas station somewhere out in the Midwest, and we said, hey, we're here, great. Fill up the gas, check the oil, check the battery, do all these things, and we went, oh, everybody split off, got a candy bar, had some smoke. Come back to the car, we make believe we can't start the car. And somebody says, what's the matter? He says, I don't know, I got no power. He said, well, see what's happening. Maybe the battery cable's disconnected. He looks, pulls up the hood. He said, where's the battery? He said, well, I don't know where the battery is. Well, yeah, wherever the battery is, that's where it is. And we're all looking. Nobody can find the battery. And we look at this poor bozo that had just up the gas and done all these wonderful things for us. It's cold outside in the Midwest in the middle of winter. What'd you do with our battery? What do you mean? I didn't do anything with your battery. Come on, man, give us our battery. What kind of a station is this? And finally, we said, well, pay the man. Use the auxiliary battery in the trunk and we'll get out of here. We'll find it later. And we took off. We left the dude there. That is not very nice. No petrol. <laughs> no pay petrol. No can. What about the women in them days? The women in them days. women in them days. Did you have any great I remember one story. How far can we go with these stories? Yeah, we go all the way. All the way. Is this, this is Colt TV. We're, we were, we're on. Oh, okay. Okay. Away, we man. were on tour with Neil Sadaka, again with the Bell Notes. And we picked up these two young ladies. I'll be kind because the young ladies may be watching. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. We took them back to our place for, for uh, an after work trip. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They decided to stay late. And, we, uh, and uh, on we go. And in the morning, they were supposed to drive us to the next gig, which was a good two, three hundred miles away. We woke up. They were not there. They had cut out in the middle of the night. Here we are. We know we've got about seven or eight hours to get to the gig. We started hitching. We found ourselves in the middle of crossroads out in, uh, it might have been Wisconsin or Chicago. And we had to get from one road to the other, which was across a large field. A farmer was willing to take us if we would help him get his plow out of the ditch. Which we did. He took us from this road to that road. We found somebody who wanted to get to the show, couldn't get tickets. We said, you take us there, we'll get you into the show. That's the story. Helping a farmer plow his field to get a free ride because two girls left us stranded. <laughs> and back in those days, you couldn't tell the story. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a good time then? Uh, did they go around the band? We yes. were disappointed that did they had left us. We thought we might have breakfast with them. Did they go around the band first, I mean? <laughs> no, they, not, not to my knowledge. No? No. You're saying that? Uh, You'll have to ask them if you see them. Because <laughs> <laughs> you ain't saying what, what, I mean, when you first, before you settled, you like be a lovely lady now. Yeah. Were things a bit more old or were they a bit timid or can you say? They're not coming. All right. <laughs> they were pretty good then. I'm glad, I'm glad to see some people don't want to say too much. <laughs> what, um, what are you looking for basically? We, we know you've come here to kick butt. Uh, I mean, what about this stage show? I hear rumours about a woman being on stage. Is this right? Yes. Are you going to elaborate any more or we're going to have a bit of Okay, surprise? okay. We call her my dancing assistant. Ah, right, yeah. There are a few surprises, so I won't tell you everything. Nah, that's fair enough. Okay, but she's going to do one thing uh, to start off the show. She's going to come out with a sign that says, The Zoo, which is one of my records. I, I think everybody knows yeah. that. She's going to bring out the sign called The Zoo, and she's going to walk around in front of the stage to make sure everybody sees these two words, as if people can't read it. And she's smiling at them all, and I'm looking at her like, well, get off the stage already, let me get on, and she's hogging the spotlight. Now, if you've seen my show before, and no, actually you haven't in this country, I use up a lot of energy. I welcome the break to catch my breath. But we're actually going to do some hard-ass dancing. Oh, did I say hard? <laughs> 
<laughs> you can say what you like. Is it, I mean, a lot of people go back in the years and basically they say that basically, the, um, you know, they talk about like the 60s and some of the 60s recordings. Is it, fair to, is it fair to say that some of the gigs rather in the 60s were sometimes uh, infiltrated with certain substances? Well, I don't know if it's fair or unfair. It is true. I'll tell you, I was one of them. Fair enough. I, I got I got out of it. Uh, some of my friends did not. And, uh, some not are here now. We've They're got not some here. friends like that. Man. That's right. That's right. We've been down that road. Uh, I think this is a story of just growing up. Some people grow up. Some people don't grow up. Sometimes it doesn't even work out that way. You could find very innocent people that they're lost because somebody else didn't grow up. Was know? it just a fad sort of thing? Like in, you know, so well, it was a lot newer then. Back in the days I was growing up, there was this drug LSD that they hadn't even made illegal yet. They didn't know how bad it was or how potentially dangerous it could be. Uh, obviously, a lot of people smoke pot, grass. I don't know what the word for it is over here. Well, uh, cross marijuana, whatever. And uh, some of them handle it and use it as an indulgence, and some of them use it as substance abuse. Yeah. And hopefully uh, the kids grow up uh, and become fine people and put it in perspective. Yeah. I don't see that much difference between having a good drink and enjoying yourself. You know, you can yeah. overdo this also. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of it existed. We used to did hang out. Did oh. it, sorry, did it infect the recordings? Yes, of course it did. It would either make you better or worse. <laughs> do, you, do you think so? So what recording sort of did you do that you think were infiltrated by... Well, I don't even know if it makes the recordings better or not. Probably it makes you more sloppy, but if it makes you think that you're better, that might cause a different kind of reaction with the way you're playing. I think it throws off your sense of timing. But uh, recording is a very interesting process. You sometimes don't want things to be crystal clear or letter perfect. You get a techno beat. Evan, Evan, in your uh, recorders and yourself, have you ever put in? Have you ever put in your your own? Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Have you ever put in any of your uh, own feelings, like about life, in general, and society, in your records? Me and the Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have to sneak in, don't they? I mean, I try not to preach. I mean, it's, uh, you know, but, uh, No, but it's a personal thing, I know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean what, is there any particular record that you've said about a particular thing? No, no, no I can't really, I can't put my finger on it one right now. But you mean, you're just, your life, you sneaks in a lot of your songs. You listen to them as a boy, you see a little bit of it. Well, some songs, like that. You can think of some songs, I know they're just nonsense that I wrote, basically, yeah. you know, they just, uh, But they're, but they're happy. Yeah, they're fun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So more fun to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you done any songs that were... I liked his answer. That was a great answer. Are you going to answer it the same way, or...? <laughs> Well, my own version, but it's about the same. You don't like to preach, yeah. but if you're an artist, you do have something to say. You want to influence people, and you hope that what you're saying isn't nonsense. And you're fortunate that you're in a position that people will listen to you. And hopefully you don't abuse that position. But his answer was really very to the point. Well, thank you, you very much. <laughs> I want to thank you both very much, because I know we've got to wind it up here a little bit. Oh, you guys are all down to it. You've got to get that done. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is CDB with Mickey and Elaine. And uh, the men, they've all been waiting for it. <laughs> Jam Wagner, that's right. That's it. Yeah. I think that says it all, really. Yeah, it does, yeah. Mick, pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you yeah, very, great. very much. It's nice doing this with yeah, you, man. Yeah. Great. Okay. We like, yeah. like the cozy in the bridge, because it's all rock and roll at the end of the day. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring yeah, yeah. you two in on together, like, you know. So, brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you also to the camera crew behind us. Lock on. Uh, Dave and Martin the Fractal Brothers, who are down here digging the boogie. Thank you very much. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. What? Here we are. Heading back uh, with... Uh, the, yeah, where's the oh, yeah. where's the driver? <laughs> with the driver back and as you can oh. see we're going to be showing you some footage hey, what's downstairs. This? What's this, car? this is the car we came How in. How are you? This is the car we came in. Awesome cars. We've got a we've got a reliant Robin now. <laughs> we have the skin seats and big areas. Very, very nice manager at the hotel. Excellent. Very uh, helpful. He was a wanker. <laughs> 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 the manager was a total wanker. He was a beep. Beep, beep, yeah. beep. 
He really was. Fucking radio show, <laughs> Just tell everybody about these fucking yanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, always getting in. What the radio side. station? <laughs> what radio station? I'm, I'm from Amsterdam. <laughs> Damn it. Let's go Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> well, not right now. <laughs> right, get the CD. What? Yeah. Are we, why are we going in here? Are they coming in the Did big car? Hey? Yeah, you've you got a CD. I can hardly get up there now, man. Hard to ever. Oh yeah. Why are we going in this one? We'll probably have to put this on later so that's where. Right, okay. Uh, we are back on the air with CDB TV. TV and we're going back. Right. What's your name, Broadway? Kerry. Yes. Kerry. There's a Canadian one. Kerry's uh, very kindly taking us out. He uh, does an awful lot of driving. No, a blue in Cheering for this really hotel. Fast. It's and quite handsome uh, as well, isn't it? And there's a bit of a. Fanny over there. Bit of top shelf over there. Oh, wow. Back up. Can we get a decent shot? Put yeah. windows down. Yeah. Windows yeah. down. Just pull up a little bit. Spooky. Can we, can we get a decent yeah, shot? We're from CDB TV, and uh, we're doing a survey on chess. Yeah, all right. That'd be your pockets off. See you later, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Sharon is crazy. <laughs> oh, no. Away from Essex. I've just done this TV. <laughs> <laughs> I've done one shot. Hey, one shot. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. I bet her tattoos are spout right. <laughs> <laughs> I bet she's a very nice girl. <laughs> so, have, you got, have you got Judy on, Samara? Yes, don't, they don't. are. CR, we got CR, Incontinental Restyling, <laughs> they got on there, which is Amsterdam's favourite oh. magazine. Have you seen those t-shirts? Yeah. They're Dutch mate, man. <laughs> you, do you? We'll no. do a little bit, actually. We'll just yeah. do a little bit. bit You're from Amsterdam. Yeah. Right. Uh, I'm particular like, I like Amsterdam very much so. And I'm coming over with... Uh, I should be with the Blue Devils for your gig. Rock and Roll Dino. Yeah, for Rock and Roll Dino. June what? 14th. Yeah, what's, what's the track with Continental Restoring? Don't you like it over there? No, uh, well, there's like uh, there's a lot of people already into the music for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy just got like born. From yeah. 1990. Yeah. And he's telling everybody yeah. what to do and how to. How to do stuff. Uh, come on, man. It's a bunch of crap all together when he's talking. It's funny, actually, because I've got a lot of people over here really saying the same thing. Yeah. I mean, this man was rocking, and I was yeah. just a sperm in the old man. He's still good looking, isn't he, as well? Well, well I ain't that fucking old man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm yeah, but I'm 25. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 25. Are you a geezer? Are you a geezer? I'm a geezer. I used to run fucking uh, Selford's Rock and Roll Club, but I went down the pan. But you tried. What, yeah, yeah, no, I you didn't tried. try. Me, I wouldn't have fucked up with the barber. <laughs> I went up there with a baseball bat. Yeah, you had the crack down. Oh, you went up there with a baseball bat? It's just good You went up there with a baseball bat? Yeah. That's why you fucking put it down. Like, we're in a well, basketball. Well, you've got to do what you've got to do, innit? Fucking lie. Never trust a woman. 